We all know quite a number of people who have everything that it would take to be happy, and they are not happy because they want something else, or they want more of the same. And we all know people who have lots of misfortune, and they are deeply happy. They radiate happiness. Why? Because they're grateful. Here is my list of 2017's most influential people in my life. Usually I just do like a written vlog about this, but this year I figure, eh, why not make a video? First dude on the list, let's meet Tim Munyon. Did you know this guy last year bought a truck from his company just so that he could keep it in front of his house so that when people were in need, they could borrow it? Like, how cool is that? How? <laughs> so awesome! Next is John Munyon. When John isn't parenting foster kids or volunteering at inner city youth camps, he is hosting hundreds of people every year to his farm for like birthdays, weddings, whatever. And he does all the before and after cleanup. Never complains and he's just super happy to do it because he gets to serve people. That's pretty cool. Next on my list is John Tossig. Did you know that old man Tossig actually lives in the inner city just for the purpose of outreaching his community. He has a barber shop set up in the bottom of his fourplex just to give out free haircuts to kids so he can like connect with them and build relationships. That is amazing. Next is Taylor Heron. Taylor has helped me this last year because I was studying for my pilot's license and I was basically freaking out and having an anxiety attack. And she herself has a, her private pilot license. She came over to like help me study and just volunteered all her free time and she never asked anything in return. The next people on this list are on there because of their insight. I'm sure most of you guys have heard of Tim Ferriss. In one of his episodes, he's talking about the 21 day bracelet challenge. Basically, you have to go 21 days without complaining. And if you do complain, you have to take this bracelet that he gives you and put it on your other wrist. He said that the feedback that he got from his audience was that it was like one of the most life changing things they've ever done. So obviously I had to try it. When you're not complaining, your whole view of like reality in the world just slowly shifts. And if you wanna try it, I'll have a link below. Colin Cowherd is a sports broadcaster and while he, yes, he just talks about sports, he speaks a lot of insight into like daily life. He always says, don't chase money. You can make money doing basically anything. Instead, you should chase what you're passionate about and you should surround yourself with people who you get along with and who you work well with. Also, he agrees with me that Steph Curry is extremely overrated. Steph Curry's not the most valuable player. If, if he's the most valuable player, then why are the Warriors favored by five tonight on the road against Portland and he's not playing? Mm -hmm. So I never in a million years thought that I would put Rick Steves on this list, like this old white dude with a comb over who does like, I don't know, kind of like hokey travel videos, like walking through the hills of Pompeii. Oh, and we looked out abroad over the ocean. Oh, the chocolate and the... Anyway. This TED talk is amazing. He touches on like the importance of travel and he articulates why it's exciting. Not only is it super fun, it's super essential for everyone to do. He articulates that in a way that personally I've never been able to do. Give it a watch. I don't know about you, but I was raised thinking the world is a pyramid with us on top and everybody else trying to figure it out. <laughs> And then I traveled and I realized, you know, we have the American dream, that's a great thing, but other people have their own dream. A great thing about travel is it connects you with people. And, you know, if I'm making a tour or a guidebook or a TV show and I'm not connecting people with people, I'm kind of nervous because it's going to be a flat experience. It's people that really, you know, make your, your experience vital. That's the mark of a good trip. Next is Johan Hari, I think that's his name. Johan, Johan. He's a British author and journalist. In this TED Talks, he speaks about the truth behind addiction. Really, addiction is just about bonding with other people. If we're not bonding, forming relationships with other human beings, then we're gonna create bonds with a substance or a thing or something that's gonna give us rewarding returns in some way. Human beings have a natural and innate need to bond. And when we're happy and healthy, we'll bond and connect with each other. But if you can't do that because you're traumatized or isolated or beaten down by life, you will bond with something that will give you some sense of relief. Now, that might be gambling, that might be pornography, that might be cocaine, that might be cannabis, but you will bond and connect with something because that's our nature. That's what we want as human beings. Because 
The opposite of addiction is not sobriety. The opposite of addiction is connection. Thank you. Now on to the inspirational people category. To start out the inspirational people list, I have Benton and Miles Munya. So these guys have started their own small food company. I've never met two people who are so excited to live healthy and eat clean and feel super good about themselves. Their ability to inspire change in my life is pretty incredible. Ooh, this is a fun one. Next is Ben Tossig. As some of you might know, I've helped Ben start his uh, psychology therapy vlog. Uh, he's probably gonna get mad at me for saying that. Like, not mental health issues, because that's so boring. He speaks insight into like the thought processes and the human psyche in a really insightful way. Anyway, take a look at this clip. Our brains are wired to collect information about our value. It's the biggest question that we've got. Who are we? What are we worth? Are we worth loving? And so we're constantly assessing the way that we're treated in our experiences to try to answer that question. As a metaphor I, I use in my office a lot, I call it the coin metaphor, right? Imagine that you are a coin and you're two dimensional and you're laying on a city street and you don't know what coin you are. Are you a penny? Are you a quarter? Are you a $10 million coin, right? And all you can see is the way that people keep walking by you and not stopping to pick you up. How long do you, do you experience that before you come to the conclusion that you must be a penny and you must not have any value? Because look, people walk right past me. In many ways, we are that unreached people group. We are that group of people that devalue people based on their race. We look down on people and we say they're not worth as much if they don't earn as much, if they don't, if they have an orientation that we don't like, if they are a part of a political party that believes things that we don't believe, we devalue them and we reduce them. Nathan Rice. Nathan is also like one of those John Munyan type people. You know, a lot of people say, well, I want to have a job where I can like help people all the time. That is actually what Nathan lives. Nathan is one of the most helpful people that I've ever met. And every time that I hang out with him, I feel like I learn this, the same lesson over and over again, which is, what was the lesson? Oh yeah, one of the strongest things you can be is humble. Next on the inspirational people list is Ralph Munyon. So this summer when I was traveling with Ralph, he introduced me to a book called The 12 Week Year. And at first it sounded really old manny. Get more done in 12 weeks than others do in 12 months. <sighs> Eventually I listened to his pitch and it actually kind of sounded interesting. Ralph went on to Amazon Prime the book to my house the next week. One of the biggest inspirations, but, but <laughs> that book was one of the biggest inspirations for me starting this vlog. Doing this vlog. <laughs> cool. This, for this vlog, it was. I dare Ben to Miles, Ben. Um, oh, and lastly, Berta. I, I think the biggest lesson that I've learned from Berta this year is that eventually people will become the way that you treat them. So if you continually treat someone as if they have value and are respectable, eventually they will begin to adapt that into their own construct of their identity and they will begin to live as if they have value and as if they should be respected. Cool. And that about wraps it up. truth.